Hello riders and welcome back to another episode of Highway to Hell and today we're going to continue our coverage from Game Informer magazine about the new Midnight Suns video game coming from Firaxis Games and 2K Games in March of 2022. And in the last episode, we kind of talked more about the lore and the story setup, basically, of what the game will be. And because that's the stuff that interests me the most, I mean, anytime a game comes out, gameplay is kind of second to me. I'll try to adapt if the story looks interesting. And the story and the characters being used in this game do look interesting to me. And so that's why I wanted to start there. But this is the second element that kind of intrigued me. So I wanted to talk about this because this kind of is gameplay, but it ties into story in a way, which is called Living with Legend. So this is the section of the article I'm going to focus on. This is like a 20-page article with pictures and everything. So I'll have some of the pictures and videos and images and trailers and stuff that they showed. I'll have some of that playing in the background. If you want to check that out, you can just watch that. Links to the video down below and all the other stuff that I find. I'll put links to it down below as well. But mainly we're going to focus on this article here. So Living with Legends is the section they focused on where they talk about the Abbey. Now the Abbey is your headquarters in the game and there's a lot of things you can do at the Abbey but the main thing you do is you're basically living there. This is where the organization of the Midnight Suns has lived secretly for generations ever since this probably before the Salem Witch Trials and uh, and so we talked earlier in the previous episode that maybe Agatha Harkness has some ties to this place and obviously the caretaker who is uh, Sarah is her name and she is Lilith's sister and apparently she has decided to side with the humans in some regard I don't know if she's a blood sister or what but she is her sister and she sided with the humans particularly the hunter and she wants the hunter and the humans to succeed or so it seems i don't know the full story obviously uh, so i don't know if there's twists or turns there but uh but it's cool because the caretaker is a character from the comic books like the Ghost Rider comics but uh, i think the current caretaker is female but in the 90s stuff with the Min rise of the midnight suns uh, it was not female it was a, it was a male um so yeah so this is just all really cool stuff at the abbey there's also pets around, like Charlie, the dog that can is like a Ghost Rider dog. It bursts into flames. Um, Charlie is a dog and pet that you can, you know, train or hang out with, and it'll become loyal to you. And then you can use Charlie for various things and side quests around the Abbey, I guess. Um, and then also there's other pets and other creatures you can use as well, from what I hear. So those are kind of things going on at the Abbey. There's also uh, all the characters live there too. So it's not just you as the hunter living there, but you have Robbie Ray as there, Nico, Blade, and Ghost Rider, who are the four newest members of the Midnight Suns. Blade is obviously the like the older guy who's uh, part of the team, but Nico, Magic, and uh, Ghost Rider are all younger. They're like you know late teens, early twenties, and they are kind of the upstarts. And then you have on the other side, you have Tony Stark. Obviously, you have Wolverine, you have Captain Marvel, uh, Captain America. You have all these people and Doctor Strange kind of in the middle between the two teams and kind of the bridge between the two teams. I guess him and Tony Stark are going to have like, you know, they're going to kind of butt heads a lot, which, you know, most people who've seen the MCU movies know that that happened in Infinity War. So that makes sense to have it happen here. And it has happened in the comics, too, because they just are two men that are both smart, but they approach things from a very different angle. And so uh, so you have all those members there that are the experienced fighters. And then you have the hunters coming in who at one point was experienced, but kind of lost her memories and has been asleep for a couple hundred years and needs to catch up so she's almost like she's the age of these younger kids uh, but she's has some experience like the older people do um, but just from a different century so I just think that's really cool so that's everything at the Abbey but there's also things like the forge where you can go to Tony Stark and use his resources to that you collect in battle and stuff to create new tech and weapons for your character and this also essentially unlocks new cards now the card based system we're going to talk about in the next episode where we get into the combat so I'm just going to talk and keep it to the Abbey stuff for now in this one. Um, so in the Abbey, you also can go to Captain Marvel and track down Hydra activity in the war room. And then there's Blade who's, uh, you know, outside training a lot and you can go hang out with Blade and train there. Now, some of the cool things that Game Informer said in their video when they were talking about everything on this video was that at the Abbey, there's a lot you can do there. And the main thing that you can do in between missions is that you do these things called hangouts with your teammates. So the teammate thing is that you, you're basically creating a dynamic to get to know everybody and if you don't get to know anyone most of them won't power up through the game so it's kind of like uh, mass effect in some regards and this is where the rpg elements start to play in a little bit more on this game uh, and you know and they like the battle and combat stuff is card based but it's also you know kind of like tactic based and strategy but then here, this is where all the major RPG elements come in, is at the Abbey. So the Hangouts, you can actually, um, you know, some character might come up to you like Nico and say, hey, I want to watch a movie. Now, if you decide not to watch a movie with her, but you say, yeah, but I want to go play basketball. 
So she goes, okay, I'll go play basketball with you. If she doesn't have a fun time, you lose hangout points or friendship points, basically. And then she might not power up as quickly as she would have if you would have just watched the movie with her and did what she wants. Now, I hope there's things in the game where you don't just have to do everything the other people want because that feels very one-sided. Hopefully, there are times where, okay, I've done two or three things with you. Now, can we go play basketball? And maybe then you go take them and they go, you know what? This kind of was fun, you know? So hopefully, there's stuff like that in this. I, I would really like that. I don't know if the game mechanics are that dynamic, but... I would like that because otherwise it's very one-sided and I, I could get a little bored doing that, I feel. Um, but you could meditate with Doctor Strange. Like I said, you can work out with Blade. Robbie Reyes plays video games. Nico watches movies. So like I said, every time you do an activity with them, you can gain or lose friendship points, which will be used to level up characters and boost them in certain ways. Um, and then obviously the more you hang out and you know with someone and you make them you know become closer friends with you, then in battle you'll have some extra advantages as well. Uh, there's apparently no microtransactions in this game. The The studio actually came out and said that they were, were none because I guess people were jumping to that conclusion. So they're like, no, there are stuff you can purchase in the game, but they don't mess with the balance of gameplay. So like you can't buy a bunch, like, you know, can't put 20 bucks more into the game and then be more powerful than everyone else or beat the game faster. Basically, the only things you can buy in the game are cosmetics. So it'll be like costumes and things like that. Nothing that affects your actual gameplay, just things that might make your character look more styled to the way you like them styled when you're in battle you know you have the tactics kind of camera angle that's more dynamic it's overhead uh, or I, I won't say more dynamic but it's overhead looking down at you whereas in here in the abbey it's third person so the camera is right over your shoulder as you're walking around interacting with people and there will be side quests at the abbey as well so there'll be things you can unlock and do and they actually went on to say like some of the developers like jake solomon went on to say that the community itself will have to work together to solve some of the mysteries at the Abbey because someone just doing it by themselves in a single playthrough without a guide, they might, or without any help, they might not be able to do it. And uh, they definitely said there's no way to make it through an entire gameplay of this game with unlocking every single ability. So don't even try. There's no way to do it. But there is a way to, to unlock a lot of stuff that will, you know, that you can then on the next playthrough unlock other things. And maybe after two or three playthroughs, you can kind of see the whole picture of the game. So anytime you're not in battle, this is where you'll be. You'll be spending a lot of time at this place, a place with a lot of history and lore connected to the Marvel Universe, apparently. And uh, and like I said, a lot of secrets hanging around there. So I'm going to be having a lot of fun with that because as a Resident Evil fan and stuff, it's like, oh, you're going to give me a graveyard and like a mansion and like a, you know, a clock tower or something to like examine and go through. Then, yeah, I'm definitely going to go do all that stuff. That's going to be a blast. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see where they go with this. Uh, the Abbey just sounds neat. Sounds like a cool place. And they said there will be horror elements in the game, but more like fun horror, you know, like uh, kind of like they mentioned Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's more like that and less like Nightmare on Elm Street. So don't think of it as like, you know, an actual horror movie or things like that. It's more of a fun take on it. Um, you know, so it's, you know, not treating it super serious. It, it does at times, but also there's some humor in there as well. So, and I expect that. I mean, it's Marvel. So of course you're going to have that, but I just love that this is a game just knee deep in the supernatural and that is definitely what we like to talk about on this show with Marvel Comics so uh, and Ghost Rider in general so I'm very excited to see all that and of course I'm going to probably befriend Ghost Rider and Magic out of the characters revealed right now those will probably be the two main ones I want to hang out with but we'll see what other characters are released and announced and uh, and hopefully you know in battle we're going to talk more about that how many people you can bring in battle with you so I'll definitely have to alternate between my favorites because you can't bring in a full roster into battle you can only bring a couple people and we'll get more into that in the next episode but for now let me know what you think of all this about the Abbey down in the comments below, and we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in hell. Peace.